Hello everybody, Twitch Nitro here, and welcome to a new uh, Minecraft series that I've started, in which I am going to attempt to emulate the game Dwarfs vs Zombies, the uh, server game Dwarfs vs Zombies, in um, client-side vanilla Minecraft. So in this episode, I'm going to show off the shrine power. <laughs> uh, th the sh uh, dwarven shrine, which the zombies, are f when when they uh, attack, they destroy if they if there are too many um, zombies at the shrine. So here's a quick demonstration of that first, and then I'll discuss how I managed to uh, do this in vanilla Minecraft. Okay, so to demonstrate this, I am joined by three members from the Industrial Dimension server: Lefiz, <laughs> Whatman, and Frog Builder. Uh, Hello. Frog Builder and and what man? They are uh, the monsters, and the Fizz is going to join me on the good team. Uh, as you can this see, the basically. shrine power has already taken a beating by some monsters being in there. So Woo! if the Fizz will join me in the in the in the red zone, so while we're in this red zone, it will start to heal. There's and no now, if in the, the red zone. monsters join us in the red zone. Boo. Come on, zombie. Uh, <laughs> I'm a very sucks, lively zombie. So it doesn't heal or uh, hurt. And then if we leave, the uh, me and the fizz leave, and the monsters stay in, the shrine power starts to drop again. And if we stay out for long enough, maybe a quick cut here will probably be necessary. Yes, okay, on. so now we're coming down to the last few wires, and once yes. it hits zero, it will explode. It will? <laughs> After the sound, that sound. What sound? Oh, and the dragon sound. That sound. Oh, you don't have your sounds on, it doesn't matter. And there Oh we my go. god, I blew up. Diamond! Oh! Oh. <laughs> well, that was interesting. And uh, just like in the DVZ game, the portal pieces scatter everywhere. So, uh, yeah. Okay, and now I'll uh, go on and explain how this works. Thanks for help, the help, guys. Woo! Off okay. the building! <laughs> okay, so a, uh, another big thanks to those guys who helped me just then. Right, so how does this shrine power thing work? Well, it's uh, relatively simple. In fact, I... Um, borrowed some ingenuity from the actual game. As you can kind of tell, it uses an ender dragon. And uh, I'm gonna <laughs> mute the sound now because the ender dragon is really annoying. Now the ender dragon itself is actually well, called shrine power and uh, our shrine power ender dragon is attached to this indestructible um, indestructible uh, rail cart and stuck in this little bedrock thing. Now this over here <laughs> is a, a mess of logic which controls whether or not it should be healing the ender dragon or damaging the ender dragon uh, using mainly these command blocks to test for the uh, whether the zombies or the dwarfs are at the top. Um, I could simplify this a lot more but I just wanted to sort of I just sort of pieced it together as I was building it, adding stuff on and adding features on. Um, so it it is very messy. Uh, the death detection is actually the bit which is quite ingenious, because I had to try and think of a way to detect the Ender Dragon's death, but it's uh, particularly difficult to do, because the Ender Dragon's very large, you can't just, you can't very easily place blocks near it, and it destroys any blocks it touches if they're not bedrocks, portal frames, or things like that. So what happens is actually when it dies it creates a um, a portal and this portal uh, actually creates bedrock in this area allowing this current to go through. So in the creation of the portal when it dies that's what allows current to go to this over here and then this line here. So this is the uh, spawners which control the explosion at the end and the, that's what creates the um, uh, creates and destroys the uh, portal blocks which fly all over the place in a spectacular fashion. <laughs> uh, 
This over here is actually just a reset line and it makes sure that the um, the TNT stops firing. That's actually how I damage the Ender Dragon because I couldn't use damage potions or anything like that. And I couldn't just drop anvils or something like that on it. So I actually spawn a zero tick TNT exactly on it, which is on a clock. So perhaps I can demonstrate that now. There we go. And that blows up exactly on it every time the clock comes around using this. So the lava will destroy this spawner. This spawner re-spawns that spawner and that spawner attacks the ender dragon with um, TNT. Uh, this can spawner can only spawn one TNT and the rest of the TNT it spawns, it actually just spawns it down there out of harm's way. I heal the ender dragon, you can probably guess how, using health potions from these spawners. Uh, they constantly die but once I remove it they start spawning spawners which actually splash potions every uh, every so often and so that's how it um, it works so basically these things are detecting whether or not there are zombies up there so it it actually you know it's I, I like the system it's um a lot simpler than I thought it would be this is just a mess but you get the gist um, so stay tuned for future episodes I hope to be imitating the um, the hurricane <laughs> The Dwarfs vs. Zombies Hurricane. So yeah. And uh, a big big thanks to Old Man, oh, Bruce Old Man Willikers for coming up with this game. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, I've, I've watched many a, uh, many an episode and I, uh, I consider myself a DVZ fanboy. I've never actually played the game, uh, as a fun fact. Um, I should really do that. Perhaps I'll go on the 24-7 server sometime and play it. But yeah, this is uh, the Shrine Power, and uh, stay tuned. Bye.